Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another talk on day two of the Neota Network. Uh, we have another one which is on our Neota platform stream. Uh, and actually, someone who we've heard from before, Jackson uh, Liu, also did a talk at yesterday's Neota Network. Uh, so Jackson is our global head of innovation here at Neota. And today, Jackson's actually going to be speaking about a new way of building digitally with Neota. So this is going to highlight some of the newer features of Neota and demonstrate how you can use a Canvas, which is our true no-code platform, true drag and drop. You know, it's very, uh, very easy to jump into and easy to build and deploy things. How to use that to its absolutely full potential. So uh, Jackson's going to dig into that, uh, as well as a few other features that help you rapidly prototype using Neota. So uh, Jackson, why don't you kick us off? Over to you. Thanks, Max. Hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in to another Neota Network session. This one is going to be a little bit different. I started as a solutions architect with Neota nearly five years ago, and I'm going back to my roots, actually building solutions on the platform. And I'm going to be doing it very, very differently to how I would have done it all those years ago when I first joined. Now, over the past few years, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth at the company, not least the significant strides in our technology roadmap and what it means to build digital solutions without code. This is a presentation on how anyone can create a logic-based document automation solution using just Neota Canvas and Word toolbar tools of our platform. Two tools which I believe requires tops 10 minutes of training. Now, as a recap, Canvas is a web-based product that enables subject matter experts to quickly and effectively turn their expertise into runnable applications. Now, as it will be demonstrated today, Canvas is a true whiteboarding tool, fully compatible with workflow and fully compatible with our Word toolbar. Now, Neota Word toolbar feature, on the other hand, increases efficiencies and control over automating templates created in Microsoft Word. Through the Neota Word toolbar, authors are able to create questions, conditional text, and logic variables while supporting all existing features of the document, things like tables, headings, footers, bullet points, etc. So let's begin to help us demonstrate the uh, compatibility of Canvas and Toolbar to create an app, we're going to use a real and practical example, everyone's favorite, the California Consumer Privacy Laws. Now to help us, we have a CCPA fact sheet. Now, as you all would know, this CCPA took effect on January 1st, 2020, applies a new set of rules for certain businesses when it comes to the handling of personal information. Now, according to the fact sheet, Businesses are subject to the CCPA if one or more of the following conditions apply, which you can see on screen here. So let's make an app that determines whether the CCPA applies to your business. And as an added bonus, it also generates a report for you at the end for you to download. Now, you'll see here that we have already installed the Neota Word toolbar, but it's not yet activated. To activate it, very simply, save the document with a dash template at the end. Save it in a, in a file that you can retrieve. And there you go. Uh, we want to use Canvas to continue building this solution. So let's select Canvas and press submit. Now, not much has changed, apart from the fact that when you go into the toolbar, you'll see that we are now able to use all of these tools on top. Uh, quickly going through some of these tools, the prepared document on the left-hand side will remove all toolbar formatting and merge fields from a document. This is recommended to be done as a first step 
in preparing a document before the meeting to ensure it is clean and free of errors. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, looks good. Let's remove and we should have a clean document. Now the variable next to it is to help the user define new variables, view, edit, delete existing variables, insert variable, merge fields, etc. Condition is to define new conditions. Conditions can be viewed as the logic. The repeat tool helps the user to create a new repeat tag to display the values of a multi-value and instance type variable. Check document, quite a neat feature, scans the document errors with toolbar elements and then view data as a table. It will generate a table for all the templates of existing variables and conditions. All right, so why don't we start to build? Let's begin by marking up all the variables within the document. Variables are essentially answers that uh, you require from the user, which will populate um, the variable fields that we have highlighted in brackets. So let's start off with the username. Let's highlight the username up on top here. Go into the toolbar, click on variables, click on new. Give it a name, so we'll call it username. Data type is text, if that's how we want the user to answer this question. And let's go and select this very, very nifty feature, which will search for any other variables called username within the document and replace it with a variable merge field. All right, let's click OK. Now we're good with the first one. Let's do the same thing with position. Again, it should be text, replaceable, okay. And let's do the same thing with business name as well. All right, now we're done with the variables. Let's go ahead and add in the conditions. So you'll see here, there's a few conditions here. It's pretty simple in this document. Either the CCPA applies or it doesn't apply. Uh, and there is a paragraph down below if the CCPA does apply. So let's create the condition, but noting here, we're only creating the condition. The actual logic will be applied when we create the Canvas application. All right, so let's go down here first, CCPA applies. We want that to appear if a certain condition is met. So let's highlight that. Go into the toolbar, click on condition this time, give it a name. Let's call that CCPA applies. We need to add an expression. To do that first, we need to add a variable. Let's add a variable. Let's call it CCPA applies. Data type is yes or no. Either it does apply or it doesn't apply. Also creating this variable, we can reference it later, both in the document and also in the Canvas app. Click OK there. And now let's put in a default condition, which we can also reference later in Canvas. The default uh, condition will simply be CCPA. Yes. OK and OK. And you'll see that a condition field is uh, applied uh, with the green text. Now let's do the opposite for when CCPA doesn't apply. So let's get rid of these brackets and let's highlight the words doesn't apply. And let's do the same thing. Go on condition, create new, uh, CCPA doesn't apply. Forward. Let's add an expression. We don't need to create a variable because we can reuse the other variable, which is CCPA applies, but this time it's no, and the joint is okay. And we are done there. Now, finally, let's also apply a condition to this paragraph, which will only appear if the CCPA applies. So let's get rid of the brackets. Let's highlight this entire paragraph. And let's add a condition, but let's reuse an existing condition 
which is CCPA applies, okay. And you'll see that entire merge, conditional merge field is wrapped around the, uh, the paragraphs. And going back to the advantages of toolbar, all of these bullet points, all the formatting will all be recognized and saved when presenting you with the final document. All right, now that the document is done, let's go and create the logic and the Canvas app. So let's uh, get out of this document, we'll obviously save it, and let's go into our Workbench. What we wanna do first is input the document to Workbench. And to do that, very simply, there's a little add button down below there. Uh, we wanna select import a Word template. Uh, let's find that template, which we just created, the dash template template. Uh, click on that, click next. And uh, we don't need a description, we don't need an ad tag. Uh, key feature to note, let's uncheck create runnable application and let's uncheck open studio because we want to create this solution in Canvas. Click submit. And we are good. Okay, now let's create the Canvas app. Go into the Canvas tab up on top. Now to create a new Canvas application, click the big blue button on the bottom right corner. Give it a name. Let's call it the CCPA document. And click create. All right, now this is your Canvas workspace. A few things to note, name the app on top. You can redo undo actions that you have undertaken using these uh, buttons on the top right. This play button, very, very useful. If it's red, it means the app is not ready to run as an element or logic is incomplete. If it's green, all cylinders are firing. Um, all Canvas work is automatically saved. Now, Canvas applications are composed of tools, which you can see on the left-hand side. In the Canvas workspace, these tools are represented by nodes. An example was shown in the screen. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, start notes, which you can see on the screen initially, are automatically created and is used to set the app's header, footer, orientation, as well as customizing the welcome screen. The start note is the first screen that will be shown to the user when the app is launched. Now, briefly, onto the tools on the left-hand side, running down the list, an ask node, place inputs from the user at runtime. Formula node, very, very self-explanatory. Use to define mathematical operations to set the value of a variable to be used in an app. Rule node, defines logic that sets the value of a rule result variable to be used later in the app. Message node, enables authors to craft messages to display for the user at runtime. A document node, used to allow authors to create PDF, Microsoft uh, documents outputs for their application if you're not using the word toolbar as we have done so here. And email notes allows authors to send emails to one or multiple recipients. All right, let's begin to build our app. To customize the start note, click on that little pencil icon on top. Uh, there's a few pretty cool features with the ability to customize Canvas apps. Now, first one is theme design allows the user to set a predefined theme to the application. So you can use a pre-built theme you built out yourself or use one that our UX team has designed. Here, I quite like the Santorini theme. So let's type that in, search for Santorini, and you'll see uh, a little preview of what that theme looks like down below automatically. Safe application data, also very useful for Canvas tuning on. That safe application data means that you are connecting your Canvas app automatically to our data manager in the M. It means that all user input data is automatically saved in the database when a user is running this app. So let's enter in a heading. Let's call it the digital 
CCPA advisor spell. You can uh, change fonts, colors, etc., and also add URL links if you choose to do so. Let's put in some text and I'll just copy and paste it. Uh, let's just say, welcome to your digital California uh, Consumer Privacy Act advisor. Use the digital advisor to determine if it's CCPA to your business. All right, now let's get out of here. We're done with that node. Well, now I want to ask for user information. To do that, let's drop in a ask node uh, down below and let's go in and create it. Give the short description. Let's call this user information. It's pretty straightforward. And there's a few questions I want to ask. First one is, uh, what is your name? So let's go, what is your first and last name? Go into question settings, give it an answer variable name. We will give it the same variable as we did in the uh, document, which is username, uh, answer type is text, and we are good there. We want another question, this time around position. So what is your position? Question settings again, answer variable name again, will be the same as what we had in the markup document and answer type is text. Pretty straightforward. Another question will be around business name. So what is your business name? Question setting uh, will be business name and we are done there. Finally, let's also ask for your email to cap it off. Uh, question again, what is your email? Uh, answer variable, let's give it a, a name, user email, and it will be text. Okay, these are the four questions that we want at this stage. I think we're good, so let's get out of here. Now let's create the questions that will be applied to the logic, uh, which is CCPA applies if the three rules apply to your business. So let's drop in another ask node. Let's connect it to the top two and let's go in and edit it. Description will be other question, uh, questions. And the first question, I'm just gonna copy and paste. Does your business buy, receive or sell the personal information of 50,000 or more consumers and households? Advisors. Give it a answer variable name. Let's call this number of consumers. And it is a yes or no question. All right, let's add another question. This time it's, does your business derive 50% or more of annual revenues from selling consumers personal information? Answer type again is yes or no. And the answer variable name here Let's call it percentage of annual revenues. All right. One final question. This one is what is your business's gross annual revenue in US millions of dollars? And the answer variable is gross annual revenue. And the Answer type here is actually, obviously it should be a number. And I think we are done there. And now it gets a little bit interesting. Now we create the logic, the rules for uh, the app and the rules to generate the document. Now let's do that. Let's drop in a rule node down here. Let's connect it up into the one app and let's give it a description. Let's call this CCPA applies. Variable name, uh, uh, we'll call this one uh, CCPA applies. Let's change the description of the rules. Just so we're clear on that. And the result variable type is yes or no, because it needs to match how we've marked up the document. Now here comes the fun part. 
here is where a, uh, a background in a logic uh, really, really helps. It's crazy rules, so bear with me while I do that. Let's do add a row at a time. So what, let's create the rule for when CCPA doesn't apply. The CCPA doesn't apply if you are $25 million or less in gross annual revenues. And if you answer no to both of those other questions. So let's find the gross annual revenue and it needs to be less or equal to the number 25 million. Add a, another row and let's find the number of consumers variable and that needs to equal no. And let's find the percentage of annual revenue variable. That also needs to equal no. And then the output or the logic is then CCPA doesn't apply. Submit. And you have your first set of rules. Now let's create the other rules. And there is a few of those for when CCPA does apply. Let's add a rule. Let's add a row. And this time, if the gross annual revenue is smaller or equal to the number 25, add a row, and percentage of annual revenues equals yes, or number of consumers equals yes, then the CCPA does apply. So it is now yes. And I forgot, this needs to be or. All right, click submit there. And I think we are pretty good there. Let's add in another rule for when CCPA applies. Uh, this time, if gross annual revenue greater than five, another row and number of consumers equals no and percentage of annual revenues equals no then ccpa applies fantastic all right let's zoom in a little bit let's add in one more rule i think there's one left I know this one left because I pre-built this earlier. Uh, if gross annual revenue is greater than 25 and number of consumers equals yes and, or sorry, or percentage of annual revenues equals yes. CCPA applies as well. All right, the full rules there. And, and it's really here that it does make sense to uh, scope out or have an understanding of what that logic is, or you can build it in here and uh, uh, build it on the fly. So there's two ways of doing it. I am quite pedantic, so I actually like to map out my logic uh, beforehand. But that looks all very good. And we will uh, save this. Well, it automatically saves for us. All right, now what we need to do is connect it up with the document. To do that, we drop in what we call a service node. Let's drop it in down here. Let's connect it to the apps. So it does look pretty simple, straight down application, pretty straightforward. Let's uh, edit it. Description, let's call this output document. Output document, output document. Service application, I think we called it the word toolbar and canvas CCPA report template. Okay, and now let's map the variables that we created in the toolbar to the variables that we created in Canvas. 
very simply, let's find it. So username needs to match username. Let's create another one. Business name needs to match to business name. Position needs to map to position. And finally, the CCPA applies needs to map to CCPA applies. All right. And now let's map the outputs. So mine, that's the template. Let's give it a name for this app. Let's call it document. All right. Now, finally, everything is going well. We just need a message to allow the user to download the document once they have run through the app at runtime. So let's drop in a message note down here. Let's connect it all together and let's edit it. All right, give it a short description. We'll call this one message. Let's be quite original. Give it a heading. Download your report here. And let's give it a text. Uh, no, thank you for taking the digital CCPA advisor download your report here and let's drop it in so let's drop in the document insert variable select a variable upstream variable a general document and there you go you can wish to clean up those connectors a little bit if you're a little bit pedantic like i am and we're short on time here so we don't need to most important thing is that arrow is now green. So it should, by all accounts, run. Let's see if it does. Beautiful. So let's go through it and see if the logic kind of kicked in. Continue. We'll say my first name is Ed Sheeran. Position is singer. My business name is Sharon Enterprises. And my email, surprisingly, is Jackson Lou and neonalogic.com. All right, we'll continue. All right, let's see whether this actually works. Let's go forward to CCPA applies. And let's say it's yes here, no there, and revenue is, I say below 25 to make it interesting, let's say 15 million. Because we answered yes to the uh, consumer question, it should apply. Here is the report. You can obviously make it, make this screen a lot more beautiful than what we have done here. Let's open it up. Let's see if that is the case. And it looks like we are good. It applies for sharing enterprises and here is the screen, beautiful. Let's go back and let's test if it doesn't apply. So let's say it is uh, below 25, let's pick 15, and let's answer no to both questions. Continue. Let's download the document, fingers crossed. Beautiful is doesn't apply to sharing in the process. And one last one for good luck. I might be pushing my luck here, but let's see another uh, around the logic for when CCPA applies. So let's say it is above 25 million. So we'll go 26 million and it is no to these questions. This one should still apply because it is above $25 million and it does apply, beautiful. And here is the paragraph. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. And as you can see, uh, Neota has come a very long way in our authoring tools uh, product roadmap. And I hope that you will be also able to create your own solutions using Canvas and our toolbar. Cheers.
Thank you so much, Jackson. That is fantastic. Um, you know, I think Canvas is one of those features of Neotologic that people have been, been able to find more and more value in. And it being a platform itself, a jumping off point, you know, we're really amazed at the types of things that people have been building in there, the types of things that people have been able to deploy and find value from there. So uh, hugely popular and, and thank you everyone for joining us to uh, spend some time with Jackson and spend another session at the Neota Network. So a lot more to come in the rest of day two uh, at the Neota Network. And as well, if you missed anything from day one, uh, lots of replays as well. So thank you again for joining us and we'll see you at the next session.